one. We know that we can write functions that return HTML, but we can also write classes that return HTML. And the reason why we would want to use a class is because React has given us the ability to write classes that, that have a lot more functionality on them versus a function that returns some HTML. Now, let me show you this. So in order to write a class, we got a first import component from React. And instead of this function, I'm going to convert this into a class. So class app extends this component that we get from React. And as a result, we now have access to this render method inside of our app line. And the render method returns any HTML one. So let's return that HTML we had before inside of our function. And we'll see that it's actually the same. And to prove it, I'm going to change the tag, this text here, and we should see it update, right? Hello, equal. So this is great. So it's pretty much the exact same at this point as our functional app that we had before, right? Our function app that returned this block of HTML. But the reason why we would want to use this kind of thing is if we wanted, say, instead to display this static string of hello equal, what if I wanted something like, let's say, instead of an A tag, we had a button. And whenever you click this button, it would change the text to something else, right? We would change hello yihua to something else. Well, the thing about that is by using a class component, we actually get access to this thing called state. What state is, is it's some object, right? A JavaScript object with properties that we can access at any point inside of our class. And the way we would do this is we would actually call the constructor keyword here. And inside of our constructor, we want to call super, right? And what super does is it calls the constructor method on the component class. And what that does is it gives us access to this dot state, right? This state property now exists on our class app and we can set it something. So this is the default value I wanna set it to first. So let's say I wanna set it to the string that we have right now, right? I wanna set some property on our state object to hello, yiwa, and then I want render that instead of hello, yiwa, the static string, right? How would I do that? Well, I would first use these curly braces, which JSX lets us do. And it tells the HTML that anything between these curly braces is going to be JavaScript. So I want you to render JavaScript, right? So we want to do this.state.string. And now between these P tags, we actually won't see anything change because it's the same string. But just to prove it, I'm going to say, hello, equal, same, right? There. We see this looking at the state, looking at this property string, and rendering that here instead. So that's awesome because now I can do this in multiple places, right? I can use this as many times as I want and I'm going to see multiple versions of it, right? So what if I wanted to change this value? Well, the way I would do it is this class app that extends component, this component also gives us this method called set state. And what set state does is it lets us modify this state object, right? On every single HTML element, we now have access to this method, this property called onClick, which takes a function that gets called whenever this element gets called. So let's pass in this function, and in this function, we're going to say this dot set state, and what set state takes is an object with all of the properties that you want to change on your state, as well as the new values that they have. So I want to change the property string to hello, Andre. Now, when I click this button, 
it, it, that it changed, right? And that's really awesome because this gives us a lot of control over what we want our components to display. So this will be really, really useful later when we don't know where we're going to get some of the information that we actually want to display inside of our HTML. But I'm going to show you in the next lesson why this is really useful.